Uh, greetings, everybody. I forgot something. Um, listen, the reason I mock these uh, pre-tribbers and what have you, you know, they do not, they can't eat, they cannot even show you one clear verse of the rap of the the resurrection, the rapture, as they call it, happening before the tribulation. But the thing is, the Bible says that you have to have two witnesses. They can't even find one. I mean, you got to go to a, a a Baptist church and be shown this to even believe it. You know, studying the Bible on your own, you'd never say, oh, the, the, the resurrection happens before the tribulation. No, it doesn't. So that's why I mock them. So what can I tell you? All right, well, uh, this continues. Well, I've been uh, accused of being unloving since I mock uh, certain people with their false doctrines. In 2 Corinthians 13, 1, Paul says, This is the third time I am coming to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Shall every word be established? And uh, in Deuteronomy 19, 15, One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity, or for any sin, in any sin that he sinneth. At the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses, so two or three witnesses shall the matter be established. And then in Deuteronomy 17, 16, At the mouth of two witnesses, or three witnesses, shall he that is worthy of death be put to death, but at the mouth of one witness, at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. So if somebody committed murder, there had to be two or three witnesses. So, and then in 1 Timothy 5, 19, Paul says, Against an elder, a Christian elder, against an elder, receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. So, but the thing is, if somebody committed a murder and there was two witnesses, you were supposed to execute the people before the sun went down that day. And if they were false witnesses and you could prove it, then the witnesses were to be put to death for being, you know, perjury. So, the, you know... Let's take a look at uh, Elijah. So let's read 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1. I guess we're going to read the whole chapter. Uh, let me tell you, I did a entire... Well, when I went to Bible college, Bible cemetery, um, we had to do a book report, basically, on... Any prophet in the Bible that you wanted. So I picked Elijah. Elijah is going to be uh, one of the two witnesses that returns in the end times confronting the, the beast and the false prophet. So I thought, yeah, this guy, I like I like Elijah. He's he's pretty uh he's pretty out there. I like him. He was bold. I'm not bold like that, I'll tell you what, but uh, I've got a one hour and 40 minute study on Elijah, his whole life. I basically took the book report and turned it into a video, so yeah. All right, so 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself to Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Now, Ahab was probably one of the worst kings of Israel, if not the worst king of Israel. 
Uh, let's see what the Bible says about Ahab. Well, in 1 Kings 16.30, And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Verse 33, And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more, did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Ahab had a wife named Jezebel. Perhaps you've heard of her. So, Lord tells Ahab, or, uh, Elijah, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Now remember, a, uh, Elijah had cursed uh, northern Israel that it would not rain. And it hadn't rained for, I think, like three years. So, and maybe a little longer. You know, you got to realize it's, uh, and it's going to be like that in the tribulation in Revelation. There's going to be famine. There's going to be drought. You know, God's game plan, it doesn't change. You know, if you want to know the future, look to the past. God doesn't change. He says, I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Verse 2. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. Now, Samaria was the capital of northern Israel. Jerusalem was the capital of Judah, nor, uh, southern Judah. Verse 3. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. For it was so when Jezebel, Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord. What does that mean? It means she cut them off. She killed them. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. See, this is what happens to people when um, the wicked are in charge. They have to hide. The righteous have to hide. You know, but Obadiah worked for that wicked king, and he protected God's people the best he could. And Ahab, verse 5, And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land, unto all fountains of water, and unto all brooks, peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. Well, you know, when there's no rain, and there's a drought, well, the grass dries up, and then what are the horses going to eat? You know, and you need, uh, back then they used horses for, uh, they were war horses. Well, and, you know, plowing and what have you. You know, they didn't have uh, international harvester uh, tractors. Verse 6. So they divided the land between them to pass through it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face, and said, Art thou that my lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go, tell thy lord, behold, Elijah is here. Now remember, Ahab and Jezebel have been looking for Elijah for a while. They wanted to kill him. And he, Obadiah, said, what have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. You know, uh, Ahab's looking for you everywhere. Elijah, he's looking. He wants to kill you. And, and you're going to have me go to Ahab and tell him I found you? 
And then you're going to disappear and he's going to be mad and he's going to kill me. That's the Bob translation. As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said he is not there, he took an oath of a kingdom and nation that they found thee not. And now thou sayest, go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass as soon as I am gone from thee, that the spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid an hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave, and fed them with bread and water? And now thou sayest, Go tell thy Lord, Behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, And Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? Are you the one that makes all these problems with no rain? That's the Bob translation. 18. And he, Elijah, answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Balaam, the false god of Israel. Probably Satan himself. Who knows? 19. Now, therefore, uh, Elijah is going to give him a, a challenge. Now, therefore, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel, you know, the false prophets of Baal, the Satanists. Yeah, go gather all those Satanists. We're going to have a little showdown here. Verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. It's funny. Uh, Elijah said there'd be no rain and there's no rain. The prophets of Baal have been praying for rain. And uh, I guess Baal... You know, he probably didn't have his hearing aid on and couldn't hear him, right? So Elijah's basically telling everybody, look, you want to follow the Lord or you want to follow Baal, the devil? And the people answered him not a word. They kept quiet. Then said Elijah unto the people, I... Even I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore t give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under and I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods, plural, and call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. So the people uh, said, Hey, well said. Verse 25. 
And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves. I'm going to let you pick the which one you want. So just so there's no uh, funny business going on, you choose. You pick the first one. You pick whatever one you want, whichever animal you want. Choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first. For ye are many and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock, which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning even unto noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar, which was made. Huh. Sounds like a Pentecostal revival. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. <laughs> I love it. Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth, and he must be awakened. You know, talk a little louder. He might be sleeping. Wake him up. Oh, yeah, I love it. Elijah mocked them. Cry aloud, for he is a god. You know, maybe he's talking to somebody, or he's pursuing something or other, or, you know, he's he's on, taking a journey, or, you know, he might be asleep. Cry a little louder so you can wake him up. He needs that little wake-up call. Verse 28, And they cried aloud, and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. You ever heard of people cutting themselves? It's satanic people. Here it is, right in the Bible. They cut themselves till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. So from morning to noon to the evening, that there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Israel, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the word, he put the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid him on the ground, and said, Fill four barrels with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time, and they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time, and they did it the third time. You know, it's kind of hard to start a fire with wood when it's wet. And the water ran round about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. Verse 36. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, uh, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell. The fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice 
and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Funny, the Lord's uh, fire came down, but the prophet of Baal, oh, sorry, didn't happen. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is the God. Wow. Verse 40. I love this. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. Elijah killed the Satanists. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and, he, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked, and he said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezebel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezebel. Now remember, Ahab's got a chariot. You know, he's not pushing this chariot. It's being drawn by horses. And, ah and so Ahab's on a chariot with horses and... Elijah ran before Ahab. He outran the horses. So, you want to know the rest of the story? Well, do the search on my channel and see uh, Elijah. One hour and 40 minutes. He was an incredible prophet. But you know what? There was no revival in Israel. That's the sad thing. There was really no revival. All the people saw this, but there really wasn't a revival. So, all right, everybody. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.